Good boy. Kiss it. Good job. Wait. Hi, I'm Allegra, owner of The Naked Dog. This is Douglas, who is our model for today. We're going to be taking a walk around Lady Bird Lake in Austin, and I wanted to show how to manage a dog in a busy, crowded, beautiful environment. Douglas is a little bit funny about people coming over. So even though we met Jeff, our cameraman outside, I still wanted to be careful and just give him a minute to see Jeff and get used to him without jumping right into the pressure of a full greeting. So here, Douglas is great. He's patient. He's not bombing around trying to smell while we're waiting. He just went into a down and regulated himself. So this is definitely a goal to have with your dog that when you're standing still focusing on something else with them on leash, that they can just chill out. Are you ready to go for a walk? So the first thing I always do is that I make a plan. Before I set out on a walk, before I have any interaction with a dog, I wanna take a quick second and make a plan so I know what I'm gonna do and how things are gonna go. This gives me confidence and it makes me more prepared if something were to go wrong. Now, your plans aren't set in stone. Usually, I don't even tell them to anyone. So if I have to pivot, I can always pivot, no problem. But planning is an essential step. And part of the leadership energy is knowing what's going on so your dog feels that they can trust you and they don't have to figure it out for themselves. So we're going to exit the apartment complex, walk down South Congress, walk to the lake. I'm expecting it's going to be a little bit busy on the hike and bike trail. I don't usually go Saturday mornings, but because I wanted to show you guys what we're going to do in that environment, we're going. So the goal for the beginning of the walk is get him in a heel. He's already had his morning pee, but he still needs to poo. So you're going to see the balance between me giving him space to take care of his business, but also not giving him so much space that he's running the walk. And then we'll do a quick loop around the trail. You ready? Oh, so here's an interesting thing about Douglas. He is very nervous about hands coming in over his head. You can see how he's saying, please don't do that. Um, this is true for most dogs. I compare it to someone reaching behind you and grabbing your crotch. What we're doing is that our hand is coming at them from above, disappearing into their blind spot, and then all of a sudden there's something touching their neck. As you can tell by watching dogs interact, they're not so touchy about their genitals their neck is actually the most sensitive place on their body. When dogs play fight, that's where they bite each other and a bite to the neck could pretty easily kill them. So it's understandable that a dog would be touchy about that. Ideally, when you greet a dog, you want to put your hand down, he's moving into the interaction and then stay in their eye line and touch along the neck or shoulder. You can see, and then from there you can move up but you can see how he was a lot more comfortable with that versus this. So anytime you wanna greet a dog, put your hand down, see if they move into the interaction, and then ideally you're keeping your hand in their eye line. This is something people don't think about, and while it is important to acclimate your dog to hands coming at their neck, from places where they're not expecting it. It's also really understandable that dogs don't like when this happens. He's such a good boy. Okay, bud, let's go. Ideally, I want to have slack in the leash. I use my fingers to pinch and I want to use my fingers like a fan. This way, when there is tension in the leash, it means something. Like right now, I'm asking him to take one step closer to me, and then when he does, we go back to slack. You can see the letter J. I always say you want your leash to look like cooked spaghetti, not uncooked spaghetti. Let's go. Good boy. 
Good boy. Wait. Okay. Good boy. So I know that Douglas has to go. Instead of waiting for him to pull me, I'm gonna offer. Douglas, you wanna go potty? So here, even when I'm giving him a chance to go potty, my rule is that I like to keep my feet on the cement and my dog does have plenty of room to choose a spot. This is about as far as I want a dog with my feet on the cement and with me leaning over, he was as far as he could go before there was tension on the leash. I don't necessarily let a dog drag me into the planters just because I don't wanna step in anything. It's rude to the person who planted it. And ultimately there's enough opportunity without them doing that. Let's go. here he's distracted by the sound of a skateboard uh -uh. Uh -uh. instead of waiting for him to react or me stopping and also focusing on the skateboard I know that it's not a threat so I want to give him little hey don't worry about it cues but kind of carry on with business as usual if I were to suck in in that moment because I'm nervous that he's nervous. I am agreeing with him that the skateboard is a threat. And just that little moment of ooh, hesitation is going to affect our relationship because he's going to feel less confident that I can take care of him. Good boy. Now, in any environment, but especially in a city, you want to be able to move your dog to either side of you. What I usually see people do is just step to the other side, but when you do this, you miss an opportunity to communicate with your dog. There's also a little piece about dog culture. Whoever moves their feet more loses. I want my dog to move around me versus me moving around them because it tells them something about our relationship. So as we walk, I'm going to switch his side a couple times. Good boy. So there, Douglas indicated that he wanted to sniff but I asked him to come along. He came along pretty quickly. So I thought to myself, hey, let's go sniff. It's okay if you don't go over the moment your dog wants you to. Douglas, you wanna go potty? And it's okay if they don't jump back into that smell they were interested in. That's like, if you're walking down the street and you see a store that looks cool, you walk back to it and you realize, no, I don't really wanna go in. It's totally okay that you didn't stop the first time and that when you loop back, they weren't that interested.
You want to go potty? Douglas likes to poop on tall landscaping plants. So I'm offering him to go in flat places and it's understandable that he's like, I prefer a tall plant, but I'm gonna see if I can get him to go somewhere flat. As I see a distraction coming, like the jogger approaching us, I'll do a little touch touch on the leash. This lets my dog know that something is coming. Most people don't think of talking to their dog in that way, but the more I can prepare my dog for what is coming at them, the more they're going to look to me for cues about the environment. And if I touch their leash, I touch their brain, and I bring part of their attention back to me. If part of their attention is on me, that's one less part that's focused on the environment, which means I will have a little bit more control in case something does happen, like they react in a way that I wasn't wanting or expecting. I hope you're also noticing how much I change the length and hold of my leash. When we are going through a crowded environment, I put it all in one hand so I could move him behind me. Sometimes I hold it at the handle. I like to say the handle is an illusion. The company that made this doesn't know what your dog is like, what the environment is like, what your height difference is. So I'll hold it by the handle when I want my dog to smell. But for the most part, I have the tip of the handle pinched between my fingers and then I have a pinch on the leash with my fingers fanned so I can use them for communication. So we made it to the hike and bike trail. Um, Douglas is a little bit more pulley than he was on the street. So I'm going to give smaller leash cues and if he keeps pulling, we're gonna do a reset back into a heel. I have a progression of cues that I give and it's really important that I don't get stuck on what I want to work. A lot of people find the cue or correction that they're comfortable giving and they stick with that and they do it over and over and over and over and over, even though it's not actually working. So it's important to me that I increase the pressure as my dog ignores me, and that will allow me to stop correcting them instead of nagging at them. Because what I'm asking my dog for is actually really reasonable. I want him to walk next to me and stay tuned into me, just like I would if I was walking with another person. The fact that we think this is too much to ask of our dogs is kind of insulting to dogs really because they're all capable of it if we know how to ask and then how to insist. And here, this is how I like to hold a leash really, really gently. Um, but don't do that unless your dog knows how to walk like this. Hmm. So we're just going to navigate the trail and head over to the boardwalk. When you're out with your dog, it's important that you stay aware of the environment. Every few seconds, at least once or twice a minute, you want to demonstrably look around. For most people, it's the opposite. They're incredibly focused on their dog and their dog is the one looking around. But I wanna show my dog that I'm paying attention to what's going on around me. This also allows me 
to notice a potential distraction before they do so I can give them that little touch touch cue. This is part of how I prevent problems. If you have a reactive dog, you definitely want to be calmly tuned into the environment and giving them cues about what's coming and then with your calm, confident energy, letting them know how you're going to handle it. Tip, the way that I handle things is always for my dog to calmly stay tuned into me and keep walking in a heel. Although sometimes, depending on the space that we're in and what's coming, I might choose to ask my dog to pull over with me. We tried to beat the heat today, but Douglas is already slowing down. He's a young Aussie. This is his first walk of the day. Part of the reason he's being so chill is that I have exercised him to the point of exhaustion every single day we've been together. You can't expect one walk every few days to do it. It really does have to be consistent. So if you're struggling with your dog, they're misbehaving in the house, they have way too much energy and they're not using it in the right way, spend two weeks where you exercise them to the point of exhaustion every single day and I promise your dog will be different. But don't expect one or two walks to change everything. You really, really have to be consistent. When you ask your dog to walk in a heel, you are going to get a more tired dog because they're going to be mentally engaged in addition to moving their feet. The act of staying in your bubble takes focus and that's part of how we tire a dog out. So just like when you're driving a car, when I decide to pull over, I want to check my blind spot and cue my dog. Because I give Douglas so many cues, he's used to staying tuned in to my legs. So by the time I look down to double check if he was coming with me, he already was, which, love it. Sweet little Austin skyline. You ready? Let's go. So if you notice, Douglas tried to go to my left side, no big deal. I had the leash pinched and when he went left, touch, 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 I wiggled him back to the right. When I was having him change sides, you might have noticed that I didn't switch the leash behind me. I always ask the dog to come in front of me. This is because people usually struggle with their dog switching back and forth behind them. So I don't want my dog to get into the habit of that, even if he's doing it on cue or command. So there, Douglas wanted to sniff and I asked him to come along. It's so important that we understand how good our dog's noses are. They can smell really, really well without stopping and without shoving their nose directly into a smell. This is like how whenever I'm in public, I can scan the environment and I don't have to go up and grab everyone's shoulders and look in their face to see who's there. Douglas's owners did something so right, which is that right after they brought him home, they booked a training session with me. So I got to meet Douglas when he was a brand new baby puppy. Over the years, we stayed in touch. They've done other training classes with us. And Douglas is a really, really well-behaved dog because his owners put so much effort into his training. Douglas has lived in downtown Austin and now lives off of South Congress. So he's used to these busy urban environments because he was exposed to them really young. So even if you don't 
live right downtown or in a city, it's important that when you have your puppy, you bring them to the city and you want to start in a quieter environment and gradually build up the level of crowds and noise and traffic as they get more comfortable. This is because as dog owners, we have to be thinking ahead about what our dog might be exposed to in their life. So don't forget that crowded urban environments is a goal to build to, just in case you end up in one with your dog, you want for them to be comfortable there. Because I really, really wanna show you guys some dog body language and behavior, we're gonna do something I never ever do, which is go to a fenced dog park. The only reason we're going in is that there is a limited number of dogs in there and the vibe feels pretty chill, especially for a Saturday morning. And I know that some of you will do this. So let's go in, let's see what I see, and let's see what has to happen to make me say, let's get the F out of here because it's definitely going to be something Good boy. When we got here, Douglas was a little bit excited. So it's good to take a moment to regulate before you go in. Don't throw an excited dog into an exciting environment and then be surprised that they won't listen to you or that they are behaving in a way that is rude and impulsive and pushy and out of control. If you want your dog to listen in there, you have to make sure that they can listen out here before you up the ante. You ready? Good boy. So here we're gonna take a quick mulligan. And that was so small, that was such a small thing, but you can go back and look at how he rushed ahead after he checked in with me. No big deal at all, but let's take a mulligan. And now I'm gonna be a little bit more intentional wait okay so it's not a punishment to take a redo but it'll make a huge difference to your dog we're gonna wait at this doorway and if you remember the door at the apartment you'll see this is a very different dog now the people in front of me um, who went in left this gate open you always want to make sure that you close both gates because this is how you keep dogs from running into the busy road and dying wait good boy and as we wait there's slack in the leash i'm not holding him because that's cheating okay come on in and here we go I'm gonna ask him to take one step back to me as I close it. It's really, really good to ask your dog to be considerate. I don't wanna have a leashed dog in an unleashed environment. He's calm, he's listening, so I'm gonna go ahead and take him off. There, I'm getting his attention before I touch his neck. When he's focused on something else, I don't wanna grab his neck out of nowhere. Can you sit? Very good boy wait let's go so what I want to show here is what I'm seeing when dogs interact and how I advocate for Douglas one two three and he looked away that's great when I walk around I don't want to have an intense overbearing anxious energy even though I am keeping an eye on things, I want to feel pretty chill. So part of how I do that with my body is that I have my weight on one leg and the other leg is relaxed. I want to show, hey, I'm comfortable with what's happening. And if I'm not comfortable with what's happening, I need to leave. Don't be anxious in an environment because your dog is gonna pick up on that anxiety and they're gonna start looking around for what's wrong and then react to whatever they see as if it's a problem because they're reading cues from you. Ah, deep breath. Good boy, good boy. Good job, Douglas, good boy. Yes, come here, yes. 
No. So when your dog looks at you to check in with you, reward them. Make sure you can call your dog back to you even when you don't need to. And when you call them back, scratch, scratch around their collar. You don't want for the only time you grab their collar to be when you're grabbing them to leash them. You want to be regularly petting them near the collar when you just do a practice callback so they don't associate your hand reaching for them with them losing their freedom. You saw that Douglas kind of dodged me, so I called him back, got the scratch, and then let him go on his way again. Ah, <sighs> so I don't usually come here, and even though it's quite chill, I'm a little bit nervous to be here. <sighs> so I tell my body, relax, and I keep taking deep breaths. Truly, there's nothing wrong right now, so I don't want to be the thing that's wrong in the environment. Douglas! No big deal, he went out of my sight, but I do want to keep my eyes on my dog. Ha! <sighs> Good boy! So here we have a black dog who recently gave birth. We have a white Great Pyrenees mix who is really enjoying sniffing everyone. We have some dogs trotting around the corner, which trotting I like, running crazy I don't like. This little black dog seems like the most playful of the bunch. And let's look at this husky over here on the right. So this dark husky, you can see his tail is up, his back is tight, his ears are up as husky ears are usually. Um, that is a very on the job energy. And when he came over to sniff Douglas, I stepped in pretty quickly because that's the kind of energy of a dog who not 100% of the time, but most likely might try to have something to prove. Um, that dog might want my dog to admit that they're on top before they end the greeting. So that's the kind of greeting that I'll be likely to interrupt. Uh -huh. So when a dog is sniffing my dog for longer than three seconds, I pretend that I want to say hi to that dog. So just what I did with the beagle, I will walk in creating spatial pressure. I will clap, clap um, to get their attention. And then I'll lean in and dogs associate that with a human wanting to greet them. They take their attention off my dog and on to me. And then if I was reading that situation correctly and my dog was uncomfortable, um, my dog will take that opportunity to scoot away so try this and it doesn't really matter if you look weird to people, it doesn't matter if you interrupt a greeting your dog was enjoying, practice, practice, practice calling a dog off of your dog really calmly, really sweetly to the owner. It's just going to look like you want to say hi to your dog. It's going to look like you're advocating for them, which is really important. All right, let's go find some dogs. Good boy, Douglas. So it's important if you do come to a dog park, don't just stand there. Walk with your dog to different sections because you want your dog to stay tuned in to you. If you stay in the same place too long, your dog will get bored and they'll have to up the ante of excitement for themselves. So that's what I experienced on the hiking trail, that if I stayed in one place too long, the dogs would get too excited, start playing too rough. They would get territorial over the space because we'd been there long enough for them to claim it. So it's important that you relocate every once in a while. Keep your dog moving, keep them tuned into you. Sometimes I like to do a walk away 
where when my dog is just a little bit distracted, I'll walk off. I want to be able to see them, but be a little bit hidden so they don't necessarily have a straight shot view to me. And I want them to have that stomach sinking moment of, oh no, that chick was my ride. Then I might make a little sound and they come find me. We're in a fenced environment, so I feel safe doing it here. And it's really, really important that you do this sometimes because I want my dog to be a teammate in keeping track of me. I don't want my dog thinking, oh, I don't have to pay any attention to her because I know she's always going to be watching me. I want, I mean, I am, but I want them to take some responsibility for keeping tabs on me. And there you could see I said, let's go without saying the words, let's go. I made a sound, I made a hand motion, and I started moving. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed coming along on a walk with me and Douglas. Stay tuned for part two coming out next month. Be sure to like this video, comment if you have a question, and subscribe to my channel. Also, go to my website and sign up for my nude letter to get notified of when these videos come out and to learn more about how to speak dog.